For Crema Media's Polity, I'm Brad Doubleman. I'm in studio with Kate Francis, a researcher at the Helen Sussman Foundation, to speak about the South African government's proposed national health insurance scheme and the implications it will have on the country's health sector. Welcome, Kate. Thank you. Please outline some of the key findings of the National Health Insurance Green Paper released by the Department of Health in August last year. I think the first thing I'd like to say in that regard is that it's really quite difficult to find the real findings of the National Health Insurance Green Paper because it's mainly based on claims and assertions that aren't backed up by evidence-based research. But nevertheless, there are a few issues that I think we should flag which relate to the National Health Insurance Green Paper and cover some of the terrain that it covers. Firstly, there's the key question of what actually is national health insurance because it's not properly defined in the Green Paper. So one is left wondering whether it's a finance mechanism or whether it's a replacement for the entire health system. If we think that it's a finance mechanism, and then that raises the second point of what would be the fiscal implications of that financing mechanism. I suppose the third concern is we're worried about the constitutional and legal implications that are brought on by the National Health Insurance Green Paper and we wonder whether the provinces might lose some of their functionality through the Green Paper and that certainly has constitutional implications. There's also the matter of the unclear relationship between the public and the private health sector and that needs to be clarified. And then there are of course human resources and management problems. So we hope that there'll be plenty more time for engagement with the Department of Health on this National Health Insurance Green Paper. In your piece, you infer that the Green Paper does not correctly and accurately diagnose the causes of South Africa's poor health outcomes. Please explain. I think the thing is that our Helen Sussman Foundation research found that the Green Paper acknowledges some of the key problems in South Africa's health system, such as the rising burden of disease when it comes to HIV AIDS and TB, and then they acknowledge the rising maternal and child mortality rate and the poor quality in South Africa's public health care system. But they fail to link those problems with the actual causes of those problems in the health system. So the Green Paper blames the two-tier health care system and inequalities between the public and the private sector for the South Africa's poor health outcomes. But we've actually found that the problems are really systemic and they're institutional and they relate to problems in both the public and the private sector. I think the Green Paper also blames lack of financial resources for some of the problems in South Africa's health system. And we've found that actually, comparatively, South Africa spends similar on health care to our peer countries, and yet our health outcomes are far, far worse. So that leads us to think that the problem is actually one of management rather than one of lack of financial resources. In your opinion, do you think that the paper's proposed changes can bring about improved quality and access to health care for all South Africans? And do you think it addresses the current deficiencies in the system? I would love to say that my answer to that question is yes, because South Africa so desperately needs appropriate health reform and appropriate health policy. But unfortunately, it's difficult to have faith in a policy proposal that doesn't accurately diagnose the problems in the healthcare system. If the Green Paper doesn't realise what the real situation is in South Africa's healthcare, how can it possibly hope to propose proper solutions to save lives of millions of South Africans? On that point, please explain some of the key elements that are hindering the country's health care system. I think there it's important to note that there are problems in both the public and the private sector. And we did a situation analysis in our um, NHI submission, and we found that the key problems in the public health system relate to things like lack of governance and accountability. There's ineffective monitoring and evaluation. A key problem is poor management. And then there's the failure to implement already existing policies that could make a huge difference. And then the problems, the usual problems of corruption. And then the private sector has its own set of problems that are leading to poor health outcomes and they specifically lead to rising costs and inefficiencies. And there we're looking at things like market imperfections, lack of price competition, but the key red flag there is lack of appropriate and effective regulation of the private sector. Now should the NHI be implemented, what are the implications for both the public and the private healthcare sector? I think at the risk of overstating the case, South Africa so desperately needs a well-functioning healthcare system that at this stage we can't afford to implement policies that are so thinly based on evidence. I think we really need health reform and that's clear, but the National Health Insurance Green Paper as it stands will need a lot more work to be done to it and a lot more consultation before we get to the stage where it'll even be implementable. What actions do you propose government, the public sector and civil society undertake in order to implement successful health reform? 
Well, I think as we've mentioned, South Africa can't afford not to do something when it comes to our ailing healthcare system. And the only thing I think is worth doing is for the Department of Health to actually go back to the drawing board with all the health stakeholders, with civil society and the private sector and collaboratively debate in a transparent manner the best reforms that are needed for South African healthcare. Thank you, Kate.